Hello, Thunder Wizards. Okay, so this is Manifestation Mastery Course video 41A. And today I am going to be talking to you about the aura, how to strengthen the aura to manifest your dreams. And I'm going to be explaining to you how the aura is your antenna to the cosmos and how without strengthening the aura, without having a strong aura, you may not be able to manifest, but you may have challenges. And I'm gonna be sharing with you the two most important factors. There's an internal factor that is absolutely essential to understand about how to uh, empower and create and strengthen the aura. And then there's an external factor and how you can use both of those to increase your aura to monumental uh, strength so that you can uh, empower yourself and manifest in your life. I'm going to be talking about a couple of different things. You know, maybe we'll get into some of the different uh, ways in which people manifest. There are two uh, main uh, techniques. One is using thoughts and feelings to vibrate through your aura, which is your antenna out into the universe to manifest what you want and the other is to use strategy and actions I'll talk about how they go together when they work when they don't etc etc so you have to watch this video all the way through because once I talk to you about all of this I'm going to share with you in this video about ways that you may not know that you are depleting your aura and sabotaging your ability to manifest and then at the end of this video, you have to watch it all the way through, I'm going to send you to another video where I'm going to share with you very simple, powerful shamanic techniques to strengthen your aura and then how to apply that into manifesting. So watch this all the way through so you can get access to that next video. Please go to neo.thunderwizard.com, the four main tools that you need in order to master this universe. Go to courses.thunderwizard.com for all of my books, my CDs, my DVDs, my video training courses, my streaming videos, my services like Vedic astrological readings, uh, rune readings, certifications. Subscribe, hit the bell button. And uh, I would also like to say thank you to my supporter, Grace Chandler. She has subscribed at the level of producer. And you can go to thunderwizard.com to see what a producer is. And you can go to her website, gracechandler.com. If you want to support this channel, go to thunderwizard.com and subscribe. The different subscription levels, you will get something of immense value. Uh, the first level, you get access to all of the, I don't even know how many hundreds of videos I have of the advanced shamanism course. You know, and it's just, you know, you, you subscribe a month at a time, and if, if after the first month you don't get what you want, just don't subscribe anymore, unsubscribe. Uh, the second level is we go deep into manifestation, and then uh, levels above that, you get to work with me personally, and then at the higher levels, you can really put your effort into getting all of that as well as supporting the channel. But anytime that you go to thunderwizard.com and subscribe, you not only get invaluable stuff, but you empower my channel. So. Let's move on. So the aura. The aura is your uh, energetic. It's not only your antenna. It's also your projector. So you have to be able to, you know, send out electrical signals as well as pick them up. Psych uh, psychic signals, spiritual signals, intentions. You have to be able to send them out as well as pick them up. And the aura does both of those things. The aura is uh, extremely important because it is your first and last defense against physical pathogens like bacteria and viruses. Without a strong aura, you will, you will get sick. You'll get sicker than normal. Um, if you uh, have a strong aura, your aura is then your first and last defense against all psychic and spiritual negativity. Now, are you one of those people that you consider yourself an empath? Perhaps you consider yourself psychic. You walk in the room and you're constantly having to protect yourself against other people's thoughts and feelings. You go into a crowded place and 
if it's too loud or if there's too many things going on, it's just you can't handle the the sound of uh, of people talking or the you know, the feeling of all of their thoughts and feelings flying around. That is a sign that may mean that you have a weak aura. Um, so I'm going to be talking to you about how to be able to protect yourself against psychic attack, against just filtering out psychic uh, things that come from other people, people's emotions and feelings, conscious or unconscious, all their garbage. Be able to protect yourself from that. You have to have a strong aura. So one of the reasons that I have become uh, a Qigong master is because I'm one of those people. I walk into a room and if I don't, my aura is not working well, I pick up everybody's thoughts and feelings and I'm, you know, I'm, I can be very much, um, you know, a shapeshifter in that, you know, like I have to be careful what movies I watch sometimes because like if I watch Rain Man, when I leave the movie theater, I'm convinced that I'm autistic, you know, so I really morph and pick up what's going on. That can be uh, averted by having a strong aura. One of the reasons I practice Qigong is so that my aura will be empowered so that I can keep my own sanity and keep my, uh, my internal psychic, uh, psychological reality intact and uh, empowered. So the strength of the aura first comes from the soul. The soul lives here in your heart center and it is, you know, the true essence of you. You know, the rest of you will fade away when you die your brain and your human personality and a bunch of other things will cease to exist your soul will take uh, some of the vibrations that you've experienced in this life and remember it and take it into the next life but you know these human factors will go away your soul will not your soul is infinite your soul is um, it is impervious to attack so this is another thing too. If you're if you are directly connected to your soul, your soul will empower your aura and will make you um, free from all harm. If you want to, if you want to make sure that you're never harmed by anything human or spiritual, make sure that you are operating directly from your soul. So there's a thing that I call the soul integrity. The word integrity is important. I don't mean integrity just in the moral sense of the word, although that definitely is part of it. Integrity means that you have a structure and the differing parts of the structure that come together to create the whole, that there is, um, that there is a strong connection and it can't be broken. But when the structure lacks integrity, then any pressure can break it apart. So soul integrity means that you, in your actions, in your, in, in, more in your actions and in your habits and your beliefs than in your thoughts and feelings, but in your thoughts and feelings as well, when these are in alignment with your soul, this strengthens the soul integrity. When the soul integrity is strong, your aura will be strong. If you want to have a complete protection from all people from all psychological issues from all spiritual attack you must have good soul integrity which means that your actions and your thoughts and your beliefs uh, are in alignment with your soul this is why the first thing i teach people the first thing i teach people is that they if they operate from fear then you leave yourself open this is why uh, the first thing I tell people is to drop all of the fear-based belief systems. That there's uh, some evil entity out there that wants to destroy you. That there is, you know, secret societies that are trying to control your world. Who gives a crap if they are? I don't care. I'm not unaware of these things. I am well aware that there's all kinds of people and governments and cliques and secret societies and they have plans. So what? doesn't have to affect me. If you're controlled by these things, change that belief. That will get you connected to your soul. That's why fearlessness is so important. My ancestors, the Norse, believed that uh, uh, if you die in battle, you go to Valhalla. The battle that they're talking about is, is battling to live what your soul wants fearlessly, even if it takes your life. 
If you live with, I'm going to live to make my soul happy, even if it kills me, you will live in Valhalla. You will live in success and in uh, abundance and in joy and in happiness and health. Guaranteed. And I'm more of the opinion now that disease is a result of being disconnected from your soul integrity. The further away you get from your soul integrity, the more that you open yourself up, but the more that you create imbalance within yourself, which creates illness. So the first, uh, the first line of defense for a strong aura is your soul. And that's what you should be focusing on the most. I talk about that a lot. But there is also an external source of energy which can be used to strengthen your aura, and that is to get energy from outside of you. This is done through meditation, through uh, ritual, through qigong and energy work, through breath work, um, even doing things like walking in the forest or swimming or exercising or going to the gym. When you do that, you, you know, when you breathe in and out uh, like that, you're, you're already bringing in energy, prana, through your, through your lungs into your body. That is another way to empower your aura. I mean, I notice it differently. You know, if I, I mean, I can notice the difference immediately. Um, if I'm depressed, if I'm disillusioned, one of the things I do is I just go to the gym. If I go to the gym and I start exercising and I start pumping some weights, I immediately feel empowered. All kinds of good, feel-good chemicals go through my body. I feel empowered. I feel um, alive. I feel um, motivated and I feel, um, you know, a, a belief in myself. I have confidence. I have hope for the future. So that's, these are the ways you can do it. You do it internally from your your soul integrity and you can do it externally from uh, getting energy through qigong, breath work, yoga, and other ways that I mentioned. So uh, ideally I am promoting that you do both. This is one of the reasons why courses.thunderwizard.com, if you go there you can um, see the celestial qigong. I think it's number two or three on neo.thunderwizard.com. The celestial qigong is the most powerful form of external energy practice that I know of. I don't know of any other practice that's more powerful than that that's taught online or on video. You have to go and train with a teacher to learn something more powerful than that. Um, okay, so the aura primarily comes from the soul and secondarily comes from external sources. So if you don't have a strong aura, your first defense against disease is, is compromised and your defense against other people's thoughts and feelings and negative, you know, even if somebody's doing black magic against you, if you don't have a strong aura, you won't be able to protect yourself from that. So this is why it's so important to have um, a strong aura. So let's talk about some factors that will deplete your aura. A lot of people don't realize that there are things that they may be even doing trying to uh, keep their aura strong that it's, are actually depleting it. So one of them is obvious uh, emotional, mental imbalance. If you have emotional issues, um, stress, anxiety, fears, um, you know, you go on and on and on and on. These things cause tremendous stress in the body and this weakens the aura. Um, Addiction. This sets up the next one. Addiction of all kinds. I mean, obviously, addiction to things like cigarettes, you know, that, that'll destroy your aura very fast. Cigarettes, alcohol, drugs, and also um, use of entheogens, hallucinogens, even if they're so-called shamanic power plants. These things will not, they, they can do tremendous damage to the aura. Um, I talk about it a lot, but uh, most of the time when people think that they're using these sacred plants in order to have a deeper spiritual experience, they're actually damaging themselves physically, energetically, and spiritually. Because this is why in the past you had a master shaman who made the decisions, you know, and would say, no, you get to do the ritual today, you don't because they would actually do the singing and do the meditations and do the chanting in order to, to put a, an aura of protection around people because they knew 
that these very powerful chemicals, what they did is they cracked the aura wide open. And when you crack the aura wide open, you leave yourself open to uh, spiritual negativity, uh, other people's psychological negativity, and actually, um, uh, you know, pathogens, physical pathogens. So unless you've got that strength over you, every time that you do that, you're cracking your aura open, you're squeezing the pineal and the pituitary, you're putting the organs in jeopardy, and you're putting your body under a lot of stress and you're weakening the aura. But it creates this cycle of dependence where, um, let's say somebody doesn't have strong soul integrity, they might have some mental and emotional issues, uh, they uh, have, they're feeling energetically depleted, and so they're seeking, even if it's, you know, caffeine, nicotine, they're seeking some kind of outside stimulant in order to give them that power again. Um, but when, they, when it goes to the point of using hallucinogens, then what ends up happening is they get, they get a brief empowerment from the chemical, which then afterwards there's a crash, which means that the aura collapses in on itself. It's important to understand. This is what happens with every single power plant that you use. You get a rush of energy or drug use, you get a rush of energy, the aura gets expanded, which gives you this feeling of strength and empowerment, which is what people are looking for, as well as feeling satisfied, and it does all kinds of other things that I won't get into. But then what ends up happening is that that is an artificial, temporary explosion out into the aura, and it is taken from the organs themselves. So you're actually not getting energy from outside of you. It's inside of you and you're expelling all of your energy out into your aura. And then when that happens like a flash, after that comes down, then the aura collapses in on itself. And when it collapses in on itself, then you are, you are completely open to all influences, both um, um, you know, physical as well as spiritual and psychological. But then also you, your aura, as it's coming in, like grabs all of the toxins that are in the air and pulls them into your uh, body and into your aura and your organs. And um, I did, did a video about marijuana, go watch that, what marijuana really does to the, to the energy uh, and to the aura and to the, uh, to the brain as well as the organs of the body and why ultimately any of those things, you know, ultimately are gonna lead to less energy instead of more. But the good news is, is that there is external methods. Celestial Qigong, go up here to courses.thunderwizard.com, is an incredibly powerful way, the most powerful way that I know of. And what will happen is when you do external energy work, when you do true energy work, it will, it will start working on you psychologically and emotionally and mentally to start steering you back towards your soul integrity. And so this is one of the good things. Yoga is really good for this as well. And yoga, you know, yoga isn't, by the way, just doing a bunch of postures and breathing. That's the, that, that's the superficial understanding. Westerners came back, you know, thinking that they learned yoga after they learned a little bit of hatha yoga in India. And they come back going, I trained with, but that's just the physical part of it. There's also these things called um, yamas and niyamas. I think I'm saying that right which are uh, things where you, um, you structure the way that you think and your behavior. So, you know, you employ some discipline in the things that you do and you don't do, how you think and how you act. And these things are very, very important because you're in, in what those are doing is just trying to steer you back into your soul integrity and you're operating directly from your infinite immortal soul. So that's why I say there's two ways to do it. You can do it where there's the internal method of meditation, which will align you back to your soul integrity, and that will give you power. And when you do that, you will align and you can, you know, phase out of this existence and become an immortal ascended master. And you can use external methods like Qigong, which will bring life force energy into you. But that life force energy has a consciousness and it's going to rotate you back to your soul integrity. And the same thing will happen you will start to vibrate on a higher level and you can ascend and become an immortal and become uh, enlightened and all those other good things. Um, here's another one uh, that depletes the aura. 
shame. Shame is really the, the disease of modern times. And when we talk about dysfunctional homes and dysfunctional parents, we're talking about levels of shame. When you judge yourself and you are shamed into you know, low self-esteem or uh, you know, if you become um, a narcissist, as well. Narcissists are also, they become narcissists because they're overcompensating for their internal shame, their internal negativity and self-hatred. So, you know, shame really is at the core of all of it, if, if I really want to be honest with you about it. Um, another thing that will weaken the aura is false assumptions about your relationship to the universe. So if you have fear-based beliefs, if you believe that God sits on a throne and judges you, that you were born sinful, and that you need to have Jesus to die on your sins in order to go to heaven because you are sinful, that is a false assumption that will dislocate you from your soul integrity and you'll start leaking energy. Um, so this is very hard on you. False assumptions that, that the, the idea that you are being controlled the idea that uh, the universe doesn't love you, that you um, have to align your thoughts and feelings perfectly in order to manifest your life. These are all false assumptions about the universe that will weaken your aura. I talk a lot about these. Watch more of my videos, especially neo.thunderwizard.com. Uh, um, we talk about those. And I've talked uh, already about what I call the balloon effect. So the balloon effect, and, and I'll use this one uh, a specific example, I'll use THC, uh, which is the chemical in uh, the marijuana plant, the cannabis plant, that gets, gives you the high feeling. This is a really good example of why um, external chemicals are not helping you spiritually and energetically because of the balloon effect. So again, people use external, uh, all kinds of things, whether it's gambling, whether it's uh, pornography, whether it's sex, whether it's uh, violence, whether it's you know, whatever it is. People use all kinds of external things, alcohol, cigarettes, in order to empower their aura, their feeling of empowerment. But it creates a balloon effect. And I'll explain it to you uh, with THC because it's the one of the best examples. So at the base of your spine, you have this little aperture that opens and closes to regulate your aura. And... Um, when your aura is uh, like your aura comes in a little bit, it will open up and it will pull uh, um, energy in. When it closes down, it pushes energy out of the aura, um, out into the aura. So uh, what happens is when THC is entered into the system, the it's called the Ming Men. It's at the base of the spine. It opens up completely. <gasps> And it, it sucks in all of the energy from your aura. All of it comes up through the spinal column and gets shoved up into the higher centers of the brain. And the brain inflates like a balloon full of energy. That's why uh, on THC, people feel like they're having these really intense uh, mental and emotional um, awarenesses they think that they're thinking on a very deep level they feel as though their mind has expanded well it really has the energy has come up into the into the brain and expanded it it's expanded but it, it, the feeling of having some heightened awareness or some more deep awareness is actually uh, very um, illusory it's it's a complete delusion and it's from the brain being filled with all of the aura that it's pulled uh, all of the energy that it's pulled out of the aura now, what ends up happening is that it also, once it, uh, all of your external aura gets sucked up into your brain and explodes out into this balloon, your aura is now gone. And this is why people can have hallucinations. This is why they can have experiences of, you know, having heightened psychic abilities. It's because their aura is gone. And so they have no defense against anything that's coming at them. Um the liver starts to panic because the liver uh, creates an energy field which is part of your aura which protects you from negativity. When your aura is gone, the liver, um, THC act, is actually attacking the liver. It feels like it's being attacked. This is why you get paranoia. 
So the, the, you know, things like, just tell me that I can leave this room, that I don't have to stay in this room forever. When you start to go crazy and have that kind of stuff, it's because your, your, your uh, liver's freaking out because it, it can't protect itself. And that's where the paranoia comes from. So the balloon effect, once the balloon has been expanded, then of course it will contract and it goes and it, it gets sucks in on itself. And so, you know, the, the balloon completely deflates. So now the balloon, which is your aura, has no energy in it. And so you crash. And what happens? One of the things that people want to do next, go back and get that experience again. They go back to the caffeine, to the nicotine, to the alcohol, to the, to the sex, to the uh, THC, in order to get the aura to, to expand again. But it expands and then deflates. And then the aura gets very weak and very pliable. And so you have this very weak, pliable aura. And the point is, if your aura is not empowered, you cannot manifest. Because your aura is your antenna. When your aura is strong, then you have the ability to uh, send out your intentions, not only into the universe, but into your social circles. So this will give you the ability to stand your ground. This will give you the ability to navigate toxic people because they, they will be diverted from you. Just like, you know, um, you know, as you're going through the, wa the waters parting from you, your aura will part them out of the way. They will see that you're not a victim. They will not want to come and play with you or mess with you or send you their negativity or, or um, victimize you because predators look for victims and what they look for is victims that have weak auras, weak auras that they can penetrate. Ideally, they look for energetic people with weak auras that they can suck all the energy out of but who don't have a strong enough aura to uh, defend their boundaries. So having that will protect you from others. Um, it will protect you on uh, but, you know, bottom line is that you won't be able to manifest without a strong aura. When your aura is strong, you are able to receive inspiration from outside, from the universe. You will be able to intend your reality and your uh, have your intentions go out into the universe and be manifested. You must have a strong aura to do this. So... In the next video, Manifestation Mastery Course, video 41B, I'm going to share with you very specific techniques, some of which you've never heard of, that will tell you what you can do right now today to clean your aura and empower it. And uh, I'll talk about how having a powerful aura will give you the ability to instantly manifest your intentions and your desires, whether you're using it from thoughts and feelings or whether you're using it from actions and strategy those are the two main ways to manifest and i'm going to talk about how to integrate those two uh, in the next video so to do that you're going to go to thunderwizard.com thunderwizard.com and you're going to scroll down on the right and you're going to see manifestation mastery course and you're going to subscribe to that and yes it is going to cost you money and the reason why you are going to subscribe is because you are serious. You're not here to screw around. I can promise you, and you can talk to people who have worked with me, if you follow my directions to the letter, I guarantee you that your life will change. If you practice what I tell you to do and follow my instructions to the letter on a continued basis, you will transform your life. And I can, you know, I can tell you, people tell me all the time, how they have followed what I've told them to do, especially those that work with me directly. And what ends up happening is that they end up having all of their dreams come to them. They go through tremendous transformations in the process as well. So you're gonna to go to thunderwizard.com, you're gonna you're gonna scroll down to Manifestation Mastery Course, you are gonna subscribe. And look, if it doesn't work out for you, you can try it out for a month. If it doesn't work out for you, unsubscribe. You're only committing to one month at a time. So come on, get over yourself you're worth the investment. Invest in yourself. Go to thunderwizard.com and we will then talk about how you can today cleanse your aura, empower it, strengthen it, and use it today to manifest your greatest dreams. I'll see you over there at thunderwizard.com 
and uh, that's all for now. Talk to you later.